Hello, I'm Katie Steckles. Hi, I'm Peter Ollett. Katie, what's our object this time? Uh, our mathematical object is a piece of chalk. Okay. So I've, I've brought a piece of chalk. I think this is a, a sort of weird mathematician in joke more than anything, but um, I guess... It's, it's more or less a cylinder, right? Yeah, it's a cylinder. Um, I think, I mean, there's all kinds of nice maths around it in terms of like resonant frequencies and stuff. Do you know the thing about snapping a piece of chalk in half? No. Nope. So if, you, if you're drawing on a board and it squeaks, it's because the length of the chalk is exactly the length that makes the resonant frequency of the chalk match the, the speed that you're moving it. So if you snap yeah. it, it stops squeaking. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the things you learn in a maths department <laughs> and fully understand how they work. Um, but yeah, so uh, a lot of mathematicians use chalk to write on blackboards, um, depending on what kind of department they work in. So I guess old maths departments in old university buildings will have blackboards built yeah. in. More modern buildings might be more whiteboards. And there are some people, I don't know whether I consider myself in this category, who think that blackboards are better. Well, some people are extremely fundamentalist about this position, I think. Yeah, I I think, I mean, the statement people are weird is probably true everywhere (laughs) you go, but um, I've heard various arguments Mm. uh, in both directions. So I guess um, the thing about a piece of chalk, there was something about the the feeling of connectedness to the surface you're writing on, because you're quite close to the board you're physically rubbing the chalk across the surface so you get like a vibration you get a a feel of the texture of the surface Mm -hmm. Um, it's also a similar diameter to a pencil which is not true of a whiteboard pen right this is another argument i've heard that if you've got a big chunky pen you write in a different way and it's not a natural feeling Um, but i think once you get used to anything you'll be fine with it like if you get used to writing with chalk on a blackboard legibly then most people who end up doing this in maths departments presumably will be doing it for quite a while if they've got a long, long-term long job. Yep. Um, it's not a skill that you lose, I guess. Once you've got it, you've got it. Um, but then, is depending on the quality of your blackboard, is it visible? Like, mm-hmm. if you've got a very grey blackboard, chalk might not show up. Yep. There are huge discussions about dust-free chalk. Right. Because um, I think there were some kind of health and safety regulations that came in a number of years ago about using dust-free chalk rather than normal chalk because normal chalk produces a lot of chalk dust which can when inhaled cause various lung diseases yeah. i don't know like some kind of inverse miner's lung I like totally white lung that. disease yeah. Yeah. or something <laughs> rather than black lung what makes um, it what makes it um dust free i think i think it has a slightly different chemical composition or the way okay. it's produced is slightly different but essentially, the upshot is it doesn't write very well on the board. Well, yeah, I was going <laughs> yes, to say the reason I hesitated is because I thought you were going to say it doesn't create dust. But well, it's yeah. th- that but is part of the some, point. Of something it, about it doesn't. It doesn't show up as, as well. Or? Yeah, it doesn't show up as well. It doesn't create all of this dust, but it also means that you're not kind of getting as much of it stuck onto the board when you write. Right. Um, and I've definitely known academics with like I've got a stash of <laughs> of uh, old chalk from before the regs changed. Do you want some? It sounds like people are with old light bulbs. Right. Yeah, well, exactly. And it's it's kind of that, that partly that hanging on to the traditional way of doing things. But the dust-free chalk, if you've got good quality dust-free chalk, it's fine, I think. Okay. Um, but then, you know, do you want a blackboard or a whiteboard? Or do you want um, a visualiser where you write stuff down and then you've got a permanent record of what you wrote? Right. Um, you know, how, how does this affect the process of learning mathematics? I think. But it, there's also questions around if you're just doing some working out doing that working out on a blackboard or on a whiteboard feels less permanent maybe yeah. I think some students find it easier to write on a, a little whiteboard to um, not feel as though what they're doing is definitely the answer that they're going to finish with yeah. and I mean even if they're writing in pencil or you know even <laughs> if you're writing in pen you can throw that bit of paper yes. away like I, I, I don't know why this is a worry for them I throw away huge amounts of scrap paper that I've yeah. written stuff on um, but but there no, we is, do this, we have yeah. these little A4 whiteboards and students will write on those quite happily. And if you didn't get those out and just handed paper around, they, they're so reluctant to put a mark on the paper because it's permanent. Mm-hmm. And you see them sometimes try something and then quickly scribble it out. And you're like, oh, I, well, if you'd shown me it, I could have helped you. But yeah. you, you, but it's it, progress you know, towards something. But, yeah. yeah, but if they hadn't had the option, they might not have written anything at all. So at least you've got them started. With it. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so like I certainly enjoy writing out maths on a blackboard it's good to be able to write a load of stuff and then stand back and look at it in a way that you maybe can't do with something that you've just sketched on a bit of paper 
Um, it's also easy to rub out and change things, yeah. which you can with a pencil, but it mm-hmm. you know it feels different somehow. And on a visualizer, you need to use something a bit thicker than a pencil. Yeah, I've done as well where I have a, a laptop with a touch screen and I can write on the touch screen. That's quite nice. Um, and then you can rub out and you can and it is just like writing with a mm. sort of the same scale as writing on paper yeah. I think I quite like that I think I've not I sometimes write on the board I've never written on a chalkboard I don't think really maybe when I was Ooh. in school right I might have scribbled on a board or something but I don't think I've worked anywhere that's had chalk mm. um, no so uh, yeah so I've written on boards sometimes I teach by writing on boards sometimes I use the visualiser um, and sometimes I write on a tablet screen when I was lecturing regularly for sort of proper content I had gappy notes with a and I would bring up the pdf of the notes on a visualizer and just write mm. in the gaps well yeah that's that's an advantage of the electronic things you can bring in pictures mm. and things that you can't draw yeah by hand. switch to another window and show a video yeah. or something or animation yeah I guess a lot of school teachers will now have electronic whiteboards yeah. which is another I mean I'd love to see an electronic blackboard that would be such <laughs> a technological accomplishment but yeah. yeah this this idea that it's kind of linked to a projector so you can draw on the board with a special type mm. of pen and it will mark it on the board. And you can still rub it out, but you can also save. Yeah. So that's kind of the best And you can both. interface with software on it and all yeah. that. And we have a few of those at university, but generally they're, they're sort of quite small compared to a big lecture theatre. So mm. that's why I think writing, if I'm writing on a tablet screen in front of me, um, that can be projected massive behind yeah. me. That's well, nice. Yeah, maybe it's an accessibility thing as well, because someone writing on a blackboard... Or a whiteboard, I guess, if it's just a static one. If their handwriting isn't very good, yeah. you can't make it any bigger, and you can't. You know, yeah. you, I, I definitely have memories of asking people what they've just written because I couldn't read it at all. Just put a hand up and say, "Sorry, what? What?" That's extremely <laughs> what that brave say? of you. I don't. Well, know. I know. my students don't do that. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine. Yeah. A, I lot think... of, a lot of students just go, "Oh well, I'm never going to know that thing." Then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just make those shapes on the piece of paper that I've got here, and hopefully, future me will be able to work out what that meant. Yeah. yeah definitely. Mm. No, I, I know certainly in the department where I did my PhD, the blackboards there were the same blackboards that they had in uh, the previous building that was knocked down. Right. And there was the stories that went round about bringing them into the building and getting <laughs> them up the stairs because a blackboard is a big piece. Of, they were proper slate blackboards as right, well. Right. So this is the thing because you get these very slightly green coloured blackboards yeah. and they're actually a piece of slate. Uh, or they're quite often glass, in fact, with a okay. with a back on them. So you really don't want to drop them. Yeah. Um, but in the the tall maths building, it was basically ca- uh, brought up up the very middle of the staircase between. If you imagine a winding staircase that falls back on itself. Right. But in the middle between the different <laughs> between the two railings that were the two sides of the staircase. Okay. And we we used to sort of stand in that bit and look up and imagine like a pulley system that yeah. brings up these giant sheets of glass <laughs> uh, for these blackboards. But it was just such a nice vibe to have in every room mm. a big blackboard that you could just scribble on whenever you wanted. And I guess that's like probably a nice quality, probably nice clarity on it and things yes, like that. Yeah, where I was taught yeah. it was one of those rolling boards oh, gosh, where it's like awful, a bit of fabric yeah. that they're writing on. Sorry, that was, that was an incredibly, <laughs> incredibly posh thing for me to say. Like, gosh, they're <laughs> awful. But How they, re- awful, they yeah. really are. Um, but yeah, no, I think in, and in all the communal areas as well, mm. there, were, there were blackboards that were just free for anyone to use. Yeah. Um, so there is something nice about the kind of visual of chalk on a blackboard. And I think um, someone, is it Julia Collins, used to keep a, a blog, or a, maybe yes. still does, of uh, photos of blackboards full of maths. Mm. Uh, there's something really nice and visual about that. And yeah, when I did, I did a, a residency in an art gallery for a couple of weeks and I wanted to include lots of images of mathematics... Uh, one of the things that I included were photographs of people's blackboards. Right. Um, it was slightly difficult because I asked people to write a load of maths and take a photo of it, and some of them clearly did so in order to create a coherent narrative on the blackboard. Right. What I really wanted was just a page a of working out that wasn't really going anywhere, yeah, yeah. Um, but that just sort of looked and gave a flavour of the kind of maths that they do. Mm. Um, and there were some really nice examples that came out of that, but it is... It's the language, it's the visual language of, mm. of thinking about mathematics. It's just scribbles, yeah. whether it's on a page or on a blackboard. Yeah. And uh, I guess having that around you as a student was a really nice way to sort of become used to it and to mm. feel that as a, as a sort of background. Yeah. And if you ever try and take a picture for some sort of mathematical purpose, you'll know that whiteboards are just a horrible alternative yes. to that. Well, exactly, yeah. You can photograph a blackboard quite nicely. Yeah. It turns out the oldest technology combined with the newest yes. technology of cameras is uh, is the perfect combo. Yeah. Yeah, definitely.
Mm. Right, so we are um, both on Twitter. I am at Peter Ollett. And I'm at Stex. And we both blog via theaperiodical.com. And if you want to get in touch with us, if you've got any opinions about the use of chalk or otherwise, uh, or if you can think of any other mathematical objects you would like us to feature, you can email objects at aperiodical.com. The music is Funk Game Loop by Kevin MacLeod, licensed under Creative Commons.